This is the Langsberg crater on the moon. The guys in orbit above the moon were particularly fascinated by Landsberg. They had been given a special assignment to take pictures of Landsberg because the crater, which they designated as Landsberg, had things going on in the crater that were very anomalous. <clears throat> there was construction going on. There were enormous uh, facilities in the crater up there. So they were specifically designated and signed to photograph Landsberg to see if they could figure out what the hell is going on down there in the crater on Landsberg. <coughs> While they were looking at Landsberg, this object happened to uh, express interest in them and flew by. Now this line is an artificial line that was drawn to show you the, 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 the direction that this object was going. This is a good-sized object flying past the uh, Apollo <clears throat> God, I'm so glad that some of these were saved. I still think 40 rolls of film for they can erase them. Anyhow, next picture, please. It's the same photo of Landsberg, but with the next negative, 9380, of this object here. Flying by. <coughs> ah, now we're getting into some nitty gritty. I'm going to give you just a brief little bit of history. Back in the early days of NASA and the Apollo program, I got this picture from the Japanese Space Agency, the Japanese NASA. They had a tremendous program going over there in Japan. You know, the Japanese are bright people. So the Japanese Space Agency had signed a contract with NASA years and years ago to buy copies of every picture NASA took during the Apollo program. And I'm sure the Japanese paid a sizable amount of money for this, for this contract. And as the films were developed and the photos were made and they shipped them off to Japan and the Japanese had a tremendous reservoir of good original NASA pictures. They bought them, they paid for them. Now, this photograph was released by the Japanese Space Agency, and you can see the Japanese writing here. This was taken by Apollo 13. Now, you're all familiar, I'm sure, with Apollo 13. That was the aborted mission that was going to the moon to land, and they had an accident on the way. They couldn't land. They damn well barely got back. While they are on the way to the moon, here's the moon, a number of things began happening. Some strange objects were appearing outside the windows of the space station. And guys, they grab their hassle light camera and start taking pictures. This photograph shows three different objects. This looks like a circular object with an enlarged dome on top. This is a smaller object with a circular kind of this shape craft. But coming in from the right margin of this particular picture is this. Next picture, please. Here we are. This is a blow-up of the positive in the photograph. And here is a blow-up of the negative of this object here. Ladies and gentlemen, this particular object is five miles long. And I'm tempted to use the term of big mother. No one intended that it appears to be a mothership. It's gigantic. Five miles long. And here are these uh, NASA guys are up there, these little little crank called oh, capsule, and they look out their window and they see something that's five miles long, shakes them up a little bit. When they got back to NASA with these pictures, that shook them up a hell of a lot. Next picture, please. Ah, this is the next sequence. Here, this 
large mother has moved into the middle of the frame, and something else has shown up over here, which has been estimated to be two miles long. But this really upset the guys. I've never been able to find out which one of the three Apollo members of the Apollo 13 group would admit to ever having taken these pictures. Because as you know, the Apollo astronauts were threatened with their lives. I kid you not, they were threatened seriously. They even threatened their families if they ever divulged any of the information that they knew. Next photo, please. Yeah, here we are. Here's the big mother. Here's the other one, two miles long. Here's a, a picture of the positive. This is the negative. This mother is five miles long. Up here, you're seeing what appears to be two circular objects either arriving or departing from that particular big ship. I can almost understand why the authorities in NASA, why the authorities in the space program didn't want this information to come out. They were frightened. They were stunned. They couldn't deal with it themselves, and they figured it. If they couldn't handle it, you couldn't handle it. There would be social disruption, I believe, is one of the terms they used. They were disturbed with body politic, I believe the term they use. So they clamped the lid down on this, and it's still down, and it's going to stay down, I'm afraid, for some time yet. Until people like themselves and people like me and the rest of them here on the stage. By pushing and prodding and chipping away at this lie and this secrecy, we'll eventually we will succeed. And don't you doubt that for a minute. Right on, and that's yeah. pretty powerful information. Amazing. Uh, I don't think we can make a ship that big and float it out into space. But um, you didn't show the clip, and I encourage everyone to go onto the site and see. Uh, it's over an hour presentation. Uh, they talk about Saturn. Um, they have some photographs of Saturn, and uh, there's a ship there that's over 2,000 miles. Away. So uh, they look like it was. Um, uh, making the ring of Saturn, but uh, they proposed that they were probably mining the rings of Saturn for uh, you know, the minerals or whatever was on the ring of Saturn. And these are um, uh, Mitsu Kaku, uh, 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 he's the uh, scientist, futurist, and he um, categorized civilization, and we're like a zero zero civilization meaning that we're not really even a civilization, we're not even on the chart yet. Uh, and this type civilization is at least a two to 